everybody and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about ANOVA, but a special kind of ANOVA, repeated measures ANOVAs. So this is when you have, and the example is just going to be one independent variable with three or more within subject conditions. As always, I'm using the latest build of Jamovi at the time of recording, and they've released a couple of uh, minor incremental uh, builds. So right now, as of recording, version 1.6.6 .6 is the most current build with all of the new features. That main feature, that main new feature, is is results editing in the in the results module here in the results tab. But their most stable build is 1.2.27 for all OSs. Okay, so let's open up some data and talk about repeated measures. We'll come right back to it. Okay, so here I have some really simple repeated measures data. Uh, so we have eight, 18 folks in this uh, data set, and they each rated different kinds of car ads. So they had uh, ad one, ad two, and ad three. And of course, I'm going to change these variable labels here because they are not nominal. And then we have their participant ID here, which doesn't really matter because all we are going to focus on is their ratings for ad one, their ratings for ad two, and their ratings for ad three. So the first thing we're going to do is definitely make sure we change these to continuous variables because that's what they are. And how I do that is by double clicking on the column header here and it opens up the the data change tab and we can change the kind of measure. And so I've done that for all of them. So let's go up into ANOVA and choose repeated measures ANOVA. And they had the uh, non-parametric Friedman there if you have ordinal level data for that. So the way that you set up repeated measures in spreadsheet form is a column for every measurement that you get from people, whether it's one measurement per condition or it's multiple measurements per condition. You're going to have a column for those measurements. And how you set up those columns is really going to dictate how you set up your repeated measures uh, module here where you identify and label your repeated measures factors and you put in the actual variables in those cells for Jamovi to actually calculate the ANOVA the analysis of variance and this is very similar to how you would have to do it in SPSS and so that's where JASP and Jamovi come in with using R to to calculate the and give you the information in the ANOVA but it's set up in a way that matches SPSS's uh, point-and-click menu-based uh, way Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is deal with our labeling for Jamovi to handle the within subjects variables. And so um, by default, you need at least one repeated measures factor, um, and that has to have at least two levels. You can't do go any further until you put that information in and what you fill in in the repeated measures factor box is going to uh, impact what goes into the repeated measure cells and you can see this arrow button over here that's going to be uh, where you put in the variables from your spreadsheet and you put it here so let's label this this is only labeling so what would we label this um, I think I'll just do add or add type or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what I want to name it, what makes good. So I'm just going to call it add. Level 1, I'm just going to call this one add 1. Level 2 is just add 2. I don't have any other information about this. And you can see here, level 3 is grayed out, and so is RM factor 2. Well, as soon as I write in add 3 here... Uh, and hit enter, it's going to drop in a grayed out level four, just in case I need to add in another level here. But it also gives me a little X button, because I could delete add three, if I went 
and clicked it just to show you, add three goes away. Uh, the variable label and the two level labels are black because they're required. But a level three isn't required until I add it myself. Same thing with RM factor two. I can write in another factor and it would give me a little X box just right here. So if I just did, um, I don't know, gender, well, no, that's not a repeated measures. Um, uh, timing, I don't know. We'll we'll just do that. I don't have anything. And so it gives me an X um, little button here to get rid of RM factor 2 if I need to. And once I do, it'll go back to RM factor 2 and be grayed out. Which means that it's just there as an option. We don't need to worry about it if we don't need to worry about it. Now... One of the things that I do is set up the repeated measures factors exactly as I have in the order of my variables. Now, this is a very simple data set, so I only have add one, add two, and add three. So this is going to be very simple putting it over here. But how you set RM, the RM factors box up is going to dictate the ordering that you get into the repeated measure cells. And so we have add one, add two, add three in order here because that's the order in our RN factors list, but it's also the order here in my variables list. And so what I can do is just click on add one, hold shift down, and click on add three, and I can either drag them over or I can click this button, and it'll put add one, add two, and add three in um, the places where Jamobi is waiting for those. So add one goes in the add one spot, add two goes in the add two spot, and add three goes in the add three spot. Hooray! And then um, you, if you do have a mixed design, you have to use the repeated measures module because, um, because of how the data is supposed to be set up, has to be set up in a certain way. You can't use uh, a within or repeated measures variable in any of the other uh, ANOVA modules. But here you can add between subject factors if you have a mixed model, because the between subjects factors go here, and then there's a between subjects effects box. We're going to ignore this box for now, but this would this table would be important if this box had a variable in it with at least two uh, with at least two uh, uh, levels. And then again, if you wanted to do a mixed model and Cova, you'd have to do it in this module, and here you would add covariates. Uh, one thing that I one one small thing that I do like about Jamovi is the customiz customization that you can make. So um, we get to call our dependent variable anything that we want, even though the variable itself is just a name for that column. The DV here is actually kind of important, so we're gonna call it ratings. And this really has no bearing on anything at all. It just makes reading the output. A little bit easier. Uh, we want to get our partial eta squared in this case. Um, you could get uh, eta squared if you want, but I really just enjoy getting partial eta squared. And you can see that um, partial eta and eta are generally speaking the same in this case. For repeated measures, I would actually prefer omega squared because that is a, an effect size specifically designed and created for repeated measures, but apparently that's not available here. Let's also get the generalized data square just, just because we can. It looks like it for this very simple repeated measures, it is the same as data squared. Going into model, we have nothing really to add here because we only have one variable, but this is where you would add your main effects and interaction terms if you want them in your model. And uh, here you can change your sums of squares. So type 3 is by default, and that is the unbiased checked or uh, unbiased. Uh, it's the non-biased correcting sums of squares type two and one bias correct. Now, we definitely want to get our test of sphericity, Mockley's test of sphericity, and um, which will tell us whether or not we have an issue with um, D, the idea that repeated measures has basically 
uh, three-dimensional homogeneity of variance. So sphericity is essentially checking if uh, the variance among all of my ratings in a non-independent way is a problem. So if one of these one of these cells had a variance that was different from the other ones. And it looks like with a P of 0.866 that we are fine. So we do not need the greenhouse geyser or the Hunfelt uh, sphericity corrections. And so I'll just click them very briefly to show you how this table gets set up with Greenhouse Geyser and Hewn Felt if you needed them. Uh, and uh, it's, actually, it's, it's very nice how they set this up where it's given per uh, row here or per, you know, effect versus residual or error. Now, uh, you would only need to click homogeneity test if you have a between subject factor. As you can see, be there's no between subject factor, so it cannot calculate uh, the Levine's test. So we don't need that. And I'm going to take, like I said, away the edits here. Uh, post hoc tests, we do need a post hoc test for add because it is three levels and uh, we do have a significant effect. So we need to check to see what kind of uh, effects what the ads are doing. Like, what is the reason? What are the differences among these pairwise comparisons? So that's what we're going to do. Pairwise comparisons, add one to add two, add one to add three, and add two to add three. And you can show a non-corrected p-value, a Tukey corrected Shafe, Bonferroni, and Holm. I usually do at least Tukey and Bonferroni, but most of the time I just do Bonferroni. You can see what the corrected p-values will show you and what the adjusted p-values, uh, the adjusted p-values and the non-corrected p-value for each of these. And it looks like this effect is being driven primarily in the difference between add one and add two, and a little bit between add one and add three. I think uh, among the descriptive data that uh, we see that um, I think add, it, add one is the highest, I believe, something like that. Let's get our estimated marginal means in here as well. We'll drag over add and get the, that, and so we can get our plot here with standard error bars. Because it's going to give us our plot, and look at that. Yeah, add 1 being the highest, and add 2 being the lowest. And there's not really any difference between add 2 and add 3 in this little can set of data, but add 1 is v viewed as the best. Um, I'm also going to get the marginal mean tables, so you can see that these are the values that are plotted. And our standard errors here are all equal. They are plotted just the same. And then the other options I want to get is the group summary. Click on the group summary here. There we go. We got the group summary here, uh, which doesn't really give us a lot of information. It just tells us what the N is and how many they are excluded. Now, one of the things that um, the repeated measures uh, module doesn't give you is just a basic description of the of the information. So you don't get descriptive statistics like mean, standard deviations, N, or anything like that, which I think is a, an oversight. And it should be noted that... Um, it's always nice to have a module where you're getting all of your inferential statistics to also provide you with some descriptive statistics without having to go to exploration and do that um, by yourself, essentially. But that is what uh, Repeated Measures is in Jamovi. If you like this content, please hit subscribe for more content like this. Uh, if, if you like this video, please leave a like as well um, and leave your comments and suggestions down below. Thanks for watching.